The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Don Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a distinctly Catholic point of view. And joining me today on the panel are Joanne Mercier. Hi, Joanne. Hey, Dom. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks. And Father Corey Stika. Hi, Father Corey. How's it going? Wonderful. Folks, before we get started, I have a quick request. Uh, SQPN, that's the network that uh, that brings you Secrets of Technology. We're looking for some help. We we need some volunteers. We are a nonprofit organization. Uh, our mission is to spread the, the Catholic gospel through the medium of podcasts as we examine pop culture and and uh, news. And uh, especially, especially on this show, it's the news. But we're looking for some help because we need some help from folks who are, as we're growing, I mean, we're growing like leaps and bounds, uh, but we, we can't afford to hire people. So we're looking for some volunteers who can help us in a few different areas. So one area we're looking for is anyone who has audio editing help. Uh, I'm sorry, audio editing experience uh, who would like to spend a little time helping us um, make, uh, you know, edit these shows and, and make them mm -hmm. available for people. It's not heavy duty. It's not heavy lifting. If I can do it, it's not that hard. Uh, I know if, if, I, if I can do it and I do the editing for Let's Talk, anyone can do it. Right. Uh, exactly. So and and we'll I'll give you all the information on what it is we need done. Um, we just need you to um, to be able to to do some editing. Uh, we also are looking for people to help us with areas like uh, helping us post stuff to the website, scheduling things on our WordPress website, um, and, you know the sort of the back end stuff. And we're also looking for producers. And a producer is just someone who helps us organize a show. So if we had a producer for right. say Secrets of Technology, you might you know find some headlines. Um, contact the regular panelists, make sure they're ready to go on a particular day, uh, put some of the documents together behind the scenes, our, our show document, and that's it. There's not, there's not a, heavy, a whole lot of heavy lifting uh, in being a producer. It's a, it's a few hours a week. So if you are interested, could you send me an email to, uh, uh, let's send it to this show, I think, actually, technology at sqpn.com, and let us know um, that you're interested in helping out, and we can chat about what it is you could uh, help us with. So that said, let's jump into the uh, tech news of the week. So the big news this week, our top story, are <laughs> these new folding phones, the smart folding smartphones. Now, the big one that got all the splash, came out of the gate first, is the $1,980 Samsung Galaxy Fold. Um, and the way this one works is um, it, it's like, think of two Galaxy S10s stacked on top of each other, and then you fold them apart. And so there's a screen on the top, and you fold them apart, and then inside it, like a book, it opens up and there's a screen there. There's also a Huawei uh, uh, Mate X, which works the opposite way. The screen wraps around the outside of it. And so as you unfold it, the screen uh, expands, I guess is, the, is what I'm trying to say, expands to the, the backside, and now you have a big tablet-sized device. Um, and then there's uh, one, the Royal Flex Pi, which is sort of like a trifold device. Uh, so you get one of them. Samsung was out of the gate first last week. Uh, Huawei and Royal, they um, brought them out at the Barcelona Mobile World Congress this week. So the big, you know, the, one of the things people focus on is, is the price. Um, which the, for the Samsung and, you know, all of them, they're around $1,980. Um, uh, around two two grand. Of course, that's a these are early adopter low low volume devices. You know, these are the mm -hmm. first ones out of the gate. Um, but from the point of view of just the the advance, you know, where smartphones are going, we wanted to kind of talk about, you know, just the idea of uh a, a these these folding phones. So let's let's start with that. Is is Joanne, I'll start with you because you're the one who wanted to talk about this more, most oh, of all. Oh, yes. Um, is this something you'd want? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Um, number one, it, it, I know it's early adopter land right now with the prices, but the phones are going up as it is. 
in price. Right. And that already concerns me because a lot of people use cell phones as their lifeline. So mm -hmm. this is already a concern. If we're going to start pricing people out of the market, then that's not good. We're going to say, oh, yes, you could have a really good smartphone or this really crappy one. Right. You know, so I, I, I don't want people to go there. Second of all, I have a problem right now, because, and it, this might just be particular to me, but there might be others out there also. I carry around a phone and a tablet because I'm a mm. little older. I like to see things a little bigger. So I like to have my tablet. I don't really care for the to carry the phone. I'd rather have it on my wrist. That's mm. the, and that's why I have a smartwatch. So if the smartwatch could become my phone and disengage itself from my iPhone, then I would I could cut out the middleman and save a little bit of money. So I'm looking at it from from that point of view. The foldable, I think, all right, okay, so we're gonna put two phones together, make it twice as big. And then it does fold out into a tablet, but does it lie flat? Right so, now, we're not seeing too much of that either. I know I'm probably well, jumping three things ahead here, but well, I, I just can't see it yet. The, or the, if ever. The, the thing that, so on your thing about like uh, you want to carry a, a you, right now you carry an iPad and a, and a, and a phone and mm -hmm. you'd rather the phone become a watch. But mm -hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't having a phone that folds out to an iPad eliminate one of those devices as it is? Like no, then you wouldn't have to I carry an iPad or tablet. You could carry something the size of a phone that does that, right. that then folds out. Right, but with my tablet right now, right now with my phone, it's easier to put that in a purse or in my or in my pocket. A tablet, I always have to have a pocketbook or something bigger. Right. So, unless so it as a woman, I think of it that way. But but, but if, if it, you're still, but if it folded, if it would be more portable. But it still doesn't look like it's gonna fit in a pocket. It's I'm still gonna well, need a pocket book. It's well, not gonna write I have an iPhone eight plus. Yeah. That's already start to be difficult to put into some jacket sure. pockets. Sure. So mm -hmm. you know, it's just probably me. Okay. But I'm but it's I guess for me it's a personal thing, but the price is starting to bother me because it's yeah. not just this thing being so expensive, but just the regular phones being expensive now. Right. It's getting ridiculous. Father Corey, what's your perspective? I complete. I hate to say this. I completely disagree with you, Joanne. And I think because <laughs> of the fact it, it no, because this is early adopter tech. Right. This right now, this is this is the you know like uh, you've got a quote Dom from Leo Laporte. You know this is Leo Laporte level of tech right now. Right. This is mm -hmm. the, the super geeks who they've got all they've got all the expendable money in the world that they can throw at something like this. My thought was though you're, you're talking about like the size of the phone. You're know, looking at the pictures I'm seeing online. Fold it up. This thing doesn't look much bigger than my phone. I've got the original Pixel XL. Uh, you know, you've got the Galaxy Note and things like that. Um, it doesn't look much bigger than that folded up. So it doesn't look much bigger than current phones. But my thought was here. Here's kind of a kind of a, just a you know pie in the sky thought. What about flip phones? What if we go back to the you know the size of like the Razer flip phone, but the whole thing is a smartphone? Then you've got this size of phone folded in half. That would fit better in pockets. Right. You know, they they focused on going bigger w with the wider. current form factor. So, right. Wider, wider, yeah. to be fair, yes. But what if they went narrower? What if they went smaller so it was half the size? You know, this you take my phone and fold it in half, there are very few pockets it won't fit in. You know, so I think, you know, in the coming future, this could be something, you know, you talk about like the watch. Well, what if you had a watch where it folded open and you had twice the size of the display? In fact, someone you has know? has a watch uh, phone at at the Mobile World Congress where it's it it's looks like it's a slap uh, bracelet. It, it, it's a it's it's huge. It's like it's like an inch and a half, two inches wide. And it's all mm -hmm. screen around your wrist. Um, right. I, it looks it looks massive, and again, it's the tech is the tech is still early on these things. Um, but the other other thing I see with with these these foldable foldable screens is more the interesting part. Right. I think there's a lot more that can be done with it than just a phone. Yes. And depending on as the tel technology improves, you know, there could be things where currently they're not they're still using pad and paper because it it's smaller and more foldable. Mm -hmm. Where something like this will be more practical. So eventually, I, I I remember. So my my holy grail here is what I'd like to see is, um, do, do either of you remember um, was it Gene Roddenberry's Planet 
Earth, I think it was, or Earth Final Conflict. That's what it was. Earth yes. Final Conflict, yep. And mm-hmm. uh, they, they had this communications device in it all those years ago. This is like going back 20 years, where mm-hmm. it was it was like a cylinder, uh, approximately the shape of a cylinder, maybe, you know, the size of a, I would say like a hammer handle, like just about that size. Yep. And then you would, from the side of it, pull out the screen, and then you'd have this screen, you know, a few inches high and, and six, seven, eight inches wide. It was this big screen that rolled up inside and folded out. And I'm like, that yeah. is what I want to have. Is I want something that's See, like that, where when it's closed, I slide in my pocket, like, you know, just like a, it's like a, t- a cylinder, a tube. And then it opens See, up I, to this massive screen. And that's, that's where I think this technology could go, is where you could have that iPad, that full 10-inch iPad, but it's in a scroll the size, you know, basically a scroll. I mean, it, right. it just rolls up, you know, and takes up a lot less space. You, you probably still have the width, but you wouldn't have the length. Right. But this is going to bring us back into plastic screens, is it not? Because this, this yeah. isn't glass we're talking about no. here that we have right. now. Which, on one hand, means f- fewer drop cr- uh, cracked screens. True. On the other hand, there no. is still question, like when, like on the Huawei, where it folds out, that idea that, like, is it going to start to form a crease over that fold? And then with the right. the the the, gam- the the Samsung um, the Galaxy, where that comes together, that that seam, how how seamless is that seam? Will and what happens mm-hmm. if you get like lint or dust or dirt or whatever in there? And so or there's crumbs, there, right? There are a lot of questions <laughs> about yep. about the the specific application of the tech. But where do you where do you guys want phones to go? Right now, we're we're kind of stalled at the rectangular screen of glass i mean that's where phones have been for several years now where do you want where do you think phones should go from here and that's that's where i do agree with joanne is i i really think the future is smartwatch Mm. with you know earbuds basically yep that's what i would like and you know because people aren't going to want to carry this around you know and in mock google glass i think that may be part of the future too Especially so, for those of us who do have to wear prescription glasses, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, where you would have screens or you hear of the, you know, the, the iris or the, uh, the, the embed into your eye so that you see it on just, you know, as you're walking right. around, you know, stuff like that. I, I, I mean, this is kind of getting wild sci-fi, sure. but I can see that being a reality in so, the not too distant future. Wearables with AR and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, see, for me, a wearable is practical for me. I think younger people want that smaller form factor in their pocket. They like having that computer because these phones right. are computers. Mm-hmm. They're not oh, yes. just communication devices. They're computers. I look at I look at personally from a personal standpoint where I need it a little bigger. So I would yeah. rather have the phone on my wrist with an earbud and use a tablet and I'd be happy as a clam because my mm-hmm. eyes are only going to get worse not better <laughs> sci-fi keeps telling us what we want are clear clear pieces of glass that we tap on and i'm like that's a terrible idea i don't want a piece of glass in my pocket <laughs> you know that's gonna yeah. sit on and break uh, so why well, i had I, father you alluded to the fact that i i included in the in our show document uh a quote from uh leo laporte of twit uh he said it on mac break weekly uh this past week he and he said when iPhones don't update, Android phones get weird, which is a lot of fun. Because what he means is, is when uh, no. when the iPhone the iPhone hasn't changed very much in the past few years, and so the uh, Android makers, uh, who let's face it, often take their cues from Apple. I mean, every phone's got a notch now, and every phone's got, mm-hmm. has been getting rid of the headphone jack, despite the uh, the the mocking. Um, and Apple hasn't done much, so they're all like looking for ideas for things to do to, to well, create some interest. So, to, as as an Android fanboy, I will point out that Apple has more than its fair share oh. of Android stealing too. So, yeah, sure. um, and, sure. and I was gonna, I was actually gonna bring I'm you know, talking about Android. Anything. I, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, Android phones get weird. I was gonna say, what do you call the notch? Well, mm. that's iPhone getting weird. So sure. I still think the notch is ugly. And I'm, I'm glad to see that. You know, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. That the notch is they're They're looking at other options than the notch that I would prefer. Yeah. So, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Samsung has demonstrated some some different technologies to get rid of notches and other things like that. Uh, at their recent launch of the uh, S10, they have uh, an ultrasonic fingerprint reader on the front under the screen, which is I think is an interesting idea. Uh, they mm. have a 
they have they don't have a notch they have a hole punch <laughs> for the camera which uh, i don't corner. have a problem with that yeah it's an, it's an interesting uh, d- uh design choice but uh I'd, I'd love to see them get to the point where they can do through screen camera of some sort that would be interesting <laughs> Um, but but the one thing that iPhones have done is they've gotten more expensive, and so has Android. Yes. And yes. and it's the expense well, that concerns me. And, and and you know that that's a legitimate concern. But to be fair, and that and that is one thing that Android does have over iPhone. And I I'm sorry, no one who likes iPhones can argue against this. There are a lot no. more low end Android phones than there are uh, iPhones. There are a lot more Android uh, phones <laughs> and options true. than yeah. Android phones. If well, you want a keyboard, and, and, you, you know, can get a you can get a phone. I mean. There's a lot more options in the Android space. Yeah. That's for certain. And you can you can get and yeah, you, a hundred dollar Android phone isn't going to be as feature packed as even my three year old Pixel. Right. But it will still do the job. Yeah. And still do it fine. Right. And and so will my iPhone. But what I'll tell you, working with people who are, and I don't want to call some of my colleagues luddites, but they are, um, yeah. trying to explain things to them on an iPhone is a lot easier than trying to explain things right. to them on an Android phone if they happen to have one. So and I, that that's been my experience. Yeah. So I, I always try to steer them towards iPhone. I don't want to settle the iPhone Android debate today. So that's, that's <laughs> okay, next fine. We'll be on because we won't. So we'll have uh, battle royale. Yeah. No. So in some, in some future day, we'll let you go, and we'll have an, a two-hour-long uh, sequence of text special <laughs> where we'll 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 fight it out over Android versus iPhone. But that's not today. Uh, I do want to move on to our next bit of uh, of news or, uh, that we're going to talk about. This one's a little fun one. Uh, Nintendo yeah. news. Uh, there's been changes at the top of Nintendo. The Nintendo of America. President Reggie Filzami has stepped down to be replaced by Bowser. No, not the little guy running Sha-na-na. around. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. the guy from Shanana, <laughs> for those of you of a certain age, and not the, the little character from uh, Super Mario, but uh, Doug Bowser from the senior vice president of Nintendo of America has been uh, has taken over. Uh, and all all Nintendo fans over over a certain age have oh, people. <laughs> yeah. People are loving it. People are absolutely, lo- and I, I love the picture that Nintendo released, or, or at least, uh, or Doug Bowser did, um, where you know it's it's standing in front of a bookshelf, and he's got you know, thank you for your welcome, and he's got little stuffed figures behind him from right. the Mario games, including Mario and Luigi tied up by a GameCube controller. <laughs> yes, yes, a little Easter egg. You know, he knows it. <laughs> you know, and, it, and of course, there there is a lot of, a lot of humor about the fact that yes, the guy who is now running Nintendo of America, and to be clear, this is Nintendo of America. There's Nintendo International over in Japan. Right. That's that's the home office, and then there's Nintendo of America, which is you know the, the our regional branch, if you will, of Nintendo. That he's he's taking over Nintendo's operations here in the United States and North, uh, Canada as well, I believe. Yeah. But um, he uh, there's a lot of humor about that, but it's actually. I've I've been seeing a lot of comments about how this is a good time for this transition to happen because this, this Reggie fills me really is kind of pres- presided over a resurgent in Nintendo. Yep. You know, I, I, I grew up with, you know, I had the original NES, original Nintendo entertainment center, the original SNES, uh, Nintendo 64, you know, back when it first really got big and then it kind of faded. Sony came out Nintendo, Microsoft came out with the Xbox, of course. Right. And now Nintendo's back, where I just saw this morning, actually, that in Japan, Nintendo's home market, the Nintendo Switch is about ready to buy, to pass the uh, Sony PS4 for sales. Wow. That's huge. That's huge for Nintendo, because they haven't done that in a while. Yeah, the Switch is a huge game. I mean, this is a big advance for Nintendo, but probably bigger than even the Wii was. I mean, the Wii right. sort of signaled the, re- the return of Nintendo, but the Switch, yeah. in some ways, because it's so innovative, it's a, it's well, a, it's, it's a handheld mobile device that is also a console. But, it, but you know, the, the the amazing part about it, and this was kind of the point that was made in this article, is uh, this Reggie feels to me, he kind of came out and said, you know, Sony is trying for the latest and greatest because you look at every version of the the PlayStation, and it's the latest and greatest technology. It's you know by the time they actually sell it, it's already one year old technology. Right. You know the the PS uh, the, or the Xbox, same thing. You know they want the the best graphics in the world. And tells it no. Let's just focus on making fun games. Yes. The Wii is basically a repackaged GameCube. Right. Which uh, GameCube itself was a few years old when the Wii came out. Right. And then now the Switch is not the top latest and greatest. It just happens to be a tablet that you plug into your TV. Right. Right. It's the mm. form factor. It's the 
it's the solution. That's an interesting idea. And of course, yeah. it's the games. You know, when right. you think of Nintendo, you think of Zelda, you think of Mario, you think of Metroid, um, some of the other, you know, markets they've had, uh, Mario Party and Mario Kart and things like that. It's the games right. is what they're really focusing on. Right. That's a, that's a good point. So it'll be fun to to keep an eye on it. We'll 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 try to keep. I'm I'm not a huge uh, console gamer myself. Uh, I I do some PC games and a lot of uh, more, more of the, uh, the the mobile games uh, mm -hmm. like uh, iOS. But uh, well, it'll be it'll be good to keep track of that and uh, take a, and to to follow up on that as the as time goes on to see what happens with uh, the super villain in charge over at Nintendo. So uh, yeah. let's let's go to our third segment, which is um, we're going to talk about. Apple's coming streaming service. Now, we've all known for several years now that it's the, 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 the worst kept secret is that Apple is spending a billion dollars to create new original content for a coming uh, streaming service that will be available somehow uh, through its devices. Mm -hmm. um, the service, service uh, um, division is, the, is, the, is a big growing part of Apple. Uh, hardware is all, still all you know where most of their money is, but they're they're getting it. You know, but after Apple Music and iTunes and all that sort of stuff, the, the all this growing service revenue is is huge for them. So I want to just kind of speculate that I mean, one of the one of the speculations that in March will we might see this and and likely we'll see this service released. I kind of want to look forward to it and say and and ask a couple of questions. Which is first, what would you want to see in an Apple video streaming service? Now, Father Corey, I know. You're you you're not an Apple guy, so may, but maybe you're interested. In, yes and you know, no. If, yes if, and no. Well, so right, right. I mean, you have the you have the the computers, but not the the portables. Um, right. Uh, and and I think you have a Roku. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I, you know, and here's the thing: is I'm 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 Apple, and I'm not because I have an iPad that I use yep. all the time. I have a MacBook Pro and an iMac. Actually, my iMac is now a Windows computer because it's no longer supported by the latest versions of <laughs> okay. Mac OS. Um, but then I use Aww. Android on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's only it's only nine years old. I mean, come on, Windows still runs on it. See, oh. that hardware <laughs> is really good. Yeah. No, it is. It is. <laughs> but, it still gets used. So. so the 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 point I want to make is you know so. Um, for your entertainment, you know, center for your TV, you're, you've got a Roku. Joanna, you're an Apple Smart. TV person. I have an Apple TV. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to you know what what kind of what do you want to see in an Apple Video streaming service? What kind of bundling or pricing or features would it take for you to subscribe to an Apple st uh, Video streaming service? Uh, so, Father Grace, since you're you know you're sort of the odd man out on the on the TV mm. front, um, right. what would get you to subscribe, say, uh, to Apple TV? To the Apple streaming service. Got to be careful with the language. I'm going to say this very simply: something Apple will not do cross-platform. Okay. It cannot mm. be just Apple products, and I think this is the one place where they got it right with iTunes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And everything that goes with it, but they're they probably won't do it with this because the reason why iTunes has been so successful is because it is cross-platform. Right. I think um, my opinion is I think you, you're saying they won't do it might be premature. I think Apple, they might be they might be Apple device first, but I think uh, cross platform is very possible, maybe even likely in the mm -hmm. in the medium to to long term, probably medium term. Uh, so I, I think you might. I, mean, I, I might I'd come. like to be pleasantly surprised on that. Yeah. I really would. They so, just haven't shown themselves in the past to be okay. willing. Uh, Joanne, what do you, what about you? What what would get you to subscribe? What kind of bundle or pricing or features would get you to subscribe? I'm wondering, as some of the other um, tech pundits are wondering, if they're going to merge this video and the music service together. Right. And I think if they did that, I might be more inclined because I've been holding I, – I did my – three months free Apple music and that yep. was okay. And I still happen to have iTunes match only because I want my stuff all over the place. But if they take the music end and the video end and put it together, because face it, whether you had this streaming service is going to be available on every one of their products. Yes. So it's not going to matter whether or not you're, you're it's restricted to the Apple TV. It's going to be on everything. So it makes sense to put it all together and they price it you know, reasonable ten, fifteen dollars a month. I might, you know, yep. because look, I can get Netflix, Hulu on every single 
on every single thing right now. On your but toaster. their video, their, their <laughs> app, excuse me. On your toaster, you can get uh, yeah, Netflix. At, at this point, yeah. <laughs> um, but they have the app that is the Apple TV app. And that is still a little under used and underdeveloped, I think, mm -hmm. because I like it when it, because it, it will remind me right. that new things mm -hmm. have happened and it comes all over the place, you know, on my, on my uh, iPad, on my Mac, you know, so I'll get the, you know, you've got a new episode here, you got a new episode there. I like that app, but I don't think they've refined it enough. Right. So if they can try to put all that together and I guess we'll know on March 25th, because I think that's what's going to happen. They're going the, to talk about hardware and that at the same time. Yeah, there's been there's been that's new, the rumor. Th yeah, that's the talk <laughs> is that it'll be March 25th. So for mm -hmm. me, I I think I have a feeling that Apple's going to bundle it with music somehow. Uh, because there's mm -hmm. been a huge. I was like you. I I did when Apple Music first came out. I did my three months free. It was cool, but I did the math and I said I don't buy that enough music, $120 worth of new music every year to justify mm -hmm. uh, the Apple music subscription. It's just, it, it's, it's just not there for me yet. So I kept the iTunes match and, and I kept my, uh, my 15,000 tracks or whatever I already had in iTunes. Mm. Um, but the last few months, Apple has been really pushing that. Hey, come back and try this, get another three free months again. And I'm, and I'm wondering, mm. so I took him up on it, uh, partly because we have an episode of uh, Secrets of Movies, uh, Secrets of Movies and TV shows coming up on the, on John Williams wh that we're going mm. to be. Uh, I need a lot of his music to to get ready for that. So I subscribed um, and back into Apple Music, and I'm wondering if that's part of it is to is to get people signed up so that when they come out with this bundle, you know, and I'm hoping it's gonna like you said, I hope it's gonna be ten, fifteen dollars, maybe. You get the music, you get the 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 whatever the streaming service is, and it's all in one package, and it's everywhere. It's on my Apple TV. Mm -hmm. um, like like you, I agree that uh, the Apple TV app that's on the on the Apple TV device and on your phone and your pad are is is underutilized. I, I love the idea that it of having all my content in one place. It's all scattered all mm -hmm. over the place now. Of course, the one <laughs> service that isn't there. Is Netflix, <laughs> which is a pain in the neck because I do watch a lot of stuff on Netflix. So I'm, I'm looking. I I'm, I'm hoping that it's this bundle and it's reasonably priced. Now, go ahead. And there was a rumor at one point, and I don't know if it if it died or something. That if you had an Apple TV, that th that you might be getting this streaming for nothing, for free. Right, or for a you, reduced price. Yeah, if you had the uh, if you had the device actually attached to your TV, to your television set, uh, mm -hmm. the Apple mm -hmm. TV device, that would be that would be nice. I mean, as an Apple TV huge, owner, huge, as some people say, <laughs> huge, huge. <laughs> so, n this brings up a related question. So, we've got Netflix, Hulu, CBS All mm -hmm. Access. If you're a Star Trek fan, Amazon Prime, which is a bit part of a bigger product, but still. Mm -hmm. Um, and now you get Disney Plus is coming out, and that's the only place you're going to be able to get the new Star Wars shows. You're going to get these Marvel shows. Uh, you get Apple coming out with a streaming service. How many services can can the market sustain? And one uh, that's the first question. And the second question is when will consumer fatigue set in, and what will happen as a result? You know, because we're used to having cable bundles. You buy, you mm -hmm. spend 120, 150, 200 dollars a month. You get all these channels in a big bundle, uh, and then now the cable's going away, and now we're paying a little bit here and there, and it's it's going to start adding up again to those levels. So how many services too many? What do you think is going to happen as a result of this? Uh, Father Corey, I've monopolized a lot of this talking. What, what do you think? Uh, you know, I, I honestly think that um, there is kind of a fatigue, but that being said, I actually think that these little individual services are a good thing. That right. because we've said for a lot, many of us have said for years, years that cable should be all a cart, that I should be able to choose these channels, but not those channels. I want this, but not that and not packages, but individuals, you know, even if you broke it down to like, I really don't want the discovery channels. So don't give me those. But I do want right. these channels, things like that. So I, I think these these services are a good thing as far as that goes. Um, now, do we need another all in one streaming service like Apple? I don't know. I right. honestly don't. I, I would have to see what they can get. I mean, if they can get, you know, something like what Hulu started out to be, which was 
that you could watch the latest TV shows, you know, within 24 hours of being aired. And it was a good idea, except for they put commercials in it. Terrible um, commercials. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. I mean, repetitive yeah. commercials. Right. But, you know, if it could be something like that or, you know, uh, I actually I subscribe to Hulu TV, you know, for watching my TV. And it's got local access channel, the local channels, you know, mm. Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS. If it's got stuff like that, that helps a lot, you know, because that's really where I think the big push right now is to have these online cable services more than. You know, online cable services with DVR capability rather than watch on demand like Netflix and Hulu traditional right. are. Interesting. What about mm-hmm. you, jo- Joanne? What do you think is what do you think is going to happen? How many are too many? And, and how do you think that the marketplace is going to react to all of these uh, channels, all these services? Well, I, I, you know, I've looked at almost all of these and I've tried almost all of them. And now I know what I like and what I don't like. You know, I've I've got Hulu now for 99 cents and I could care. It doesn't work for me. But Netflix is big. CBS All Access is not just for Star Trek fans. It's also (laughs) for people who watch soap operas like I do. And when and when certain, you know, proceedings take over and I don't get my episode that day, I can go over to Access. But Access does something else. It, It does your local CBS station. Yes. And yep. I and no matter where I am. So if I'm in at work, I get the Boston station. If I'm at home, I get the the um, Providence station. And that I think is good for people. If Apple can figure out how to get some local stations into this right. package, I think right. that that's the sweet spot is to getting your local stations as well as your high priced, you know, streaming services that you've come to know and love. Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, one of the, the, the biggest loser in all of this is going to be to the cable networks i mean uh, the cable yeah. um comcast and cable vision and all and all these guys who are who are left in that that business of being the pipe that goes to people's right. homes and don't and that not providing any real content otherwise i think more and more people are going to cut the cord and they're going to start just they're going to say you're my internet access i don't want tv access from you i don't want phone service from you you're just an internet pipe and i'm going to spend my money on uh these unbundled services. Now, the one right. thing that that's still that's still not unbundled for me is you still got to buy. You know, if I'm if I subscribe to 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 it, um, say the Apple service or Netflix, I'm I don't necessarily want to watch all the stuff they're offering. There's only a handful mm-hmm. of things I want to watch. So if I want to see just Star Trek Discovery, I've got to pay for all of CBS All Access. Right. Um, I can't just get the thing that I want. Uh, I would love to, to unbundle right down to just the show that I want um, at a reasonable price. I mean, if you're going to break it down a buck a month for a show, it, you know, I don't know if that's even fiscally possible for these uh, services. Maybe they live off of people like me who only want to watch one thing on their network. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How, how much money is CBS yeah. All Access made off of us between season one and season two of Discovery? Because we were too lazy to actually cancel the service, though we never used it. <laughs> Right, you got to Well, I get I get right on top of it. Frankly, I I I keep reminders <laughs> on that sort of stuff. But there are a lot of people who don't like the gym membership uh, that you don't that you've stopped going to after you made your New Year's resolution. Uh, so yes, I agree with that. There's a lot of that money out there. Uh, so uh, you, you know, it's it. I think you know, will I get Apple? Probably. Uh, well, it well, no, it will depend on the content. I want to see what's there. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I haven't heard anything that really has piqued my interest just yet there's no big uh say sci-fi franchise or something like that that's going to be there mm-hmm. that i'm go- that i must have not like there is with say disney plus with the new star wars series is i've got to have that i'm gonna subscribe to that you know that sort of thing cbs all access same thing um i don't subscribe to hulu because there's nothing there that that drives me there yeah. um i keep netflix amazon prime is it's got lots mm-hmm. of shows that i want man in the high castle yeah. it's got that new Tolkien Lord of the Rings series coming. That's going to keep me connected. But what well, else? Course, is, there's, there's others out there too. Yeah. Of course, the advantage with Amazon is you have most people who have Prime don't have it because of the streaming. That's right. just a bonus. Right. I have it because I can get something shipped to middle of nowhere, Montana in two days. Exactly. Right. It's, it's a great all the, perk. It's all the benefits. I get a discount when I go to Whole Foods. I mean, that, that it, Amazon has figured out that that you, and I, you, and you create a bundle that crosses all the parts of your life. You right. make yourself 
uh, invaluable. I, w- I hope Apple learns that lesson. And that's, that's, the so thing that, that's the thing that Apple is going to, I have a feeling, struggle with. If they do introduce an actual streaming slash on-demand service, how do they differentiate themselves from Hulu? Or again, I've got Hulu only because it's Hulu TV, only because I can watch live TV via Hulu. Um, I don't have Netflix right now. I've got Prime because I've got Prime shipping. And oh, by the way, right. I can watch TV on it too. Right. Yeah, but Apple has the iTunes movie catalog too. If They've you can kept, throw yeah. that in there. And somehow make it part yeah, of it. Like can, you I mean, get if you a few watch movies those, a month, right. if you get a few yeah. movies a month with your subscription, you know that would be an enticing right. thing for a lot of people. Because that's something that that neither Amazon nor Netflix do. I mean, Amazon, you can excuse me. Amazon will let you um, buy or stream and stream or you know rent or right. stream a, a a movie. You don't get a discount. Because you're a Prime member, though, necessarily. Well, um, but there for, are for, the there first are Prime, Prime movies, movie. though. There are Prime movies, though. There are movies, right. and there's some of them are fairly recent movies That's that true. are available for free for mm. Prime subscribers. If, Same thing with if, TV shows. So, like, all the Star Trek movies, all the Star Trek series, except Discovery, are available under Prime for free. You can right. see them right. all you want. Yeah. I've been watching the Apple, Bond movies, except for the Daniel Craig ones. Those are all available as Prime. For instance. Right. Mm-hmm. And if Apple could turn around and not not say these movies will be the ones you can watch, but you can pick maybe two or three movies a month, your yep. choice, whatever, yep. that would be enticing for me. Oh, it would totally be worth it. Would, free, that, rental, that would yeah, be, free, free, free movie rentals would be a big, big yes. deal. If I could get three free movies from the first one, movies like Aquaman, uh, whatever the whatever's in the you know, like new to streaming. If I could mm-hmm. get those, you know, three of them a month, that would pay for it. That's five bucks yeah. a, a rental. Yeah, yeah, I'd be, I'd be in on that in a heartbeat. All right, let's. We've talked enough about that. So, uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll, we'll be talking about this again, especially once Apple uh, makes their announcement. And it comes out, so uh, there's plenty to talk about here in the future. But let's move on to our picks of the week, our our weekly look at uh, the whatever interesting things we've come across that we want to talk about, recommend. Um, and I think this time, Father Corey, your, it's your turn to go first. Well, perfect. So, you know, I, I've been looking for a new smartwatch for a while. You know, I've had my old uh, first generation Sony Android Wear watch for quite a few years. And it works, but it, again, it's, it's not being updated or anything. Well, my insurance company of all things, or through the diocese, the insurance company, uh, sent me a Fitbit Charge 3, which is the latest Fitbit. It is the latest version of the Fitbit. Um, and it's really impressive because you know, when, it, when I thought of a Fitbit, I, I would never look at a Fitbit. I would be looking at the Garmin's. I'd be looking at some of the other units. And because Fitbits are always very simple. You know, you could get a fit. You could at least used to be able to get a Fitbit that really didn't even have any kind of display on it. It just kind of yeah. like you wore it and it did whatever you had to do. Well, this one really is approaching smartwatch. It, um, I mean, it does all the watch things. It shows you what time it is. It, it has a timer. It has a stopwatch. It has alarms. Of course, it has all the exercise related things, you know, all the health related things or, you know, have you done your 250 steps yet this hour, which, you know, of course I'm I'm about halfway there for this hour. So once we're done recording, I'll finish that up. Have you, (laughs) you know, what's your heart rate? It's got the heart rate monitors. It's got, you know, all these, what's your sleep cycle and all that kind of stuff, all that stuff you think of a Fitbit on, but then it also does, uh, does a lot of the, it connects to your phone and can do a lot of the announcements on your phone. You know, you get a notification on your phone, it can show up on here and things like that. So more and more of these Fitbit is getting more and more into the smartwatch market with this particular one, the charge three, like I said, it's the, the latest version of the, the charge series, which has always been their high end one. Um, so I've, I've been impressed with, it. I've been using it now for about three weeks and it's, it really works well. And it is nice to be able to look at my watch, say, okay, I've had, you know, it's you know, almost one o'clock here and I've had almost 2,500 steps today, you know, stuff like that. And then again, have my announcements, my, my notifications right here that I can just pull them up and look at and clear them and all that good stuff. So. Excellent. That's uh, sounds good. I used to have a Fitbit. I have a famous uh, article on my blog at betnet.com that I wrote years ago about how Fitbit sent me to the hospital overnight. Uh, oh, because, yeah. 
because I slept on it and it and it deadened the nerves in my head. <laughs> Ooh, oops. Ooh. It's it's a long, very very funny story. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes for, to that because uh, it's a it's it's a bizarre funny story. So well, I've, uh, I haven't had that problem with this one, so that's a good thing. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Joanne, what's uh, what's your pick of the week? Well, it's an oldie but goodie, and since Apple is looking at a streaming service, I thought maybe the Apple TV might be something that people might be interested in taking another look at before all this happens. I love my, I've had four of them, and in fact, I have one now at the office, one that travels, and then one on each TV. The beauty of, at least for me and for what I do at home, it's a great place to, I put the apps I want on it, I can you know, see any, I get BYU TV because I love to watch Relative Race, you know, so you get the obscure stuff. You can put, you can put it on there. The remote is a little crazy. Um, so I use the <laughs> app on my phone, which is a lot easier to manipulate, especially when you're trying to type in words. Um, but they do have the 4K model and the non 4K model and the 4K model, I'll tell you on my 4K TV, it is spectacular. Mm. I've got to admit it's crisp, it's clear, it moves. It's um I'm I'm pretty happy with the Apple TV system. And for work, if you need to go someplace and do a presentation, that's what I use to connect my devices with. I put the Apple TV on a on a projector and then I put the um you know, either the iPad or the Mac through it and it's seamless. It works very well depending on your bandwidth, of course. And sometimes churches mm -hmm. bandwidth are a little strange right. but you can go it, it is a little pricey it's more than a roku of course it starts at the 149 for the regular apple tv 32 gig right. and it goes up to 199 for the 64 4k now do you need 64 4k not really i haven't found anything yet hmm. but yet so i have 32s right. all over and that, yeah. i think that's perfectly well you know enough capacity for anybody so if you're looking for something that'll make your tv sometimes look a little better than your cable box to watch all these netflix oh, yeah. and that kind of stuff i'd go with apple tv excellent yes i've been an apple tv user myself for for many years um my favorite app on it is the plex app so i use oh, yes. that to uh, uh... I do. That I had too, uh... I had that until they took it off of the cloud service and now i have to get a nas <laughs> yeah, I have a scenario. In order to do it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my pick is something new that I got in for a review. It may not be for everybody, but it's a fun little device. It's 12 South. is a, They make a lot of accessories for various Apple devices, and they make one called the 12 South Power Pick Wireless Charger. And what this does, it's a. it looks like a picture frame. It's very uh, unobtrusive, uh, made of what are they, Norwegian pine, they say. Um, it's Ooh. yeah. I don't I don't know if that's at all a good thing or not. Uh, they make it sound good. So it, it looks like a picture frame, but it's a wireless charger. And so the way it works is, is there's a charger built into the back, and you simply put the picture frame somewhere with a nice picture the, that you like. And whenever you want to charge your phone, you just lay it down into the the frame right on top of the picture, um, and it charges. Uh, there's a couple of things you got to keep in mind. For one thing. Your phone has to fit in it. Now, I have a, a, a iPhone 10 Plus, uh, which is the largest iPhone. I think the Max might be a little bigger. But, you know, it, and I think most phones will fit it right now. Once we start getting to, like, crazier, bigger phones, they might not. Um, and and then um, you can only do it, of course, in vertical mode. Because unless you, well, I suppose if you turn your picture frame on its side, you could you could put it sideways. But uh, But it's intended to be used in vertical mode. Uh, but uh, it, I've been using it for several days. It works fine, and the big attraction to it is, you just don't want if you don't want to see these, you know, chargers everywhere. If you want to have, if you have a nice room like your living room or uh, something like that, you don't want all this tech laying around. It's a nice hidden little bit of technology that you can put there, and they have a fun uh, bit that they do where they say if you if you take a photo and you print it out and you put it on the uh, behind the you know in the inside the frame. And then you make that photo your desktop uh, picture or your home your your wallpaper on your phone. Then it will look like you know your phone is see through that sort of thing, uh, which oh, is geez. kind of a funny Ooh. idea. Um, it sounds like a good idea for an office, you know, yeah. on your desk. That's yep. what it sounds like a really good idea for. It, it could be good for yeah for your desk, um, especially if you if you try to keep a, a 
clean look to your desk. Mine isn't. Mine's full of technology, but it's a uh, and it's it's <laughs> it's a little pricey at eighty bucks. Not it might not be for everybody, but uh, it's it's nice and it charges fast. It's a it's a it's a Qi certified fast charger. It delivers then, up to ten watts. There's the obvious caveat: you have to have a phone that will support the Qi format, which yes. not all do. I should I should yeah I should point out yes you need a Qi enabled smartphone iPhone Pixel Galaxy they all do so um a lot of a lot of the big names do a few a few don't so just uh, keep that in mind so that's my pick of the week so um before we go I'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create secrets of technology today we want to thank by name Sandra C Donna K Kathy D Mark L and John K through their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give, they make it possible for us to continue the Secrets of Technology and all the shows at sqpn.com. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. So that's it from us. What did you think of our discussion? you have any feedback you want to give us on any of the topics we discussed, the folding phones, the changes in Nintendo, Apple's streaming service, or our picks of the week, you can go to sqpn.com slash technology or the SQPN Facebook page and leave us some feedback or send us an email to technology at sqpn.com. You can find relevant links for our discussion on our show notes at sqpn.com. Please remember to like the episodes on uh, of Secrets of Technology on the SQPN Facebook page. Retweet them on Twitter. Leave us comments. Subscribe to the show if you have not yet subscribed, please. In iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, tune in your favorite podcast app or on YouTube where you should hit the bell to get notifications when new episodes are posted. And write a review in iTunes or other podcast directories. Please help us get the word out. Please share the podcast with your friends to help us grow this community of listeners. We're, we're growing uh, by leaps and bounds here at Secrets of Tech. It's a new show, and we'd love to, to reach more people. Uh, we don't want to level off here. We, we feel, feel like we've got something unique that we're offering to folks, a unique perspective that we'd love to get out to more people. Until next time. Father Corey Stika, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of technology. I'm glad to be here, and thank you, Dom. You're welcome. Joanne Mercier, thank you as well. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Dom, always a pleasure. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to the Secrets of Technology on StarQuest. <laughs>